Some of the corruption is to advance this political agenda of the left and others, because it's a corporate agenda in some ways, of open borders. And it's this terrible sanctuary policy movement where states and localities not only refuse to cooperate with the feds on immigration enforcement, but actively obstruct law enforcement, where they have dangerous criminal aliens. These are aliens arrested who should be in, the, who should be in jail for crimes, and there are, they, excuse me, they are in jail for crimes, other than just being here illegally. And rather than calling ICE and say, hey, you want to deport this person? Or, hey, we're going to release them. What do you want to do? They refuse to tell ICE about them. So Judicial Watch filed a new lawsuit in California against Santa Clara County, which is where San Jose is located. It's just south of San Francisco. On behalf of taxpayers to overturn a policy that protects aliens in Santa Clara County Santa, Santa, excuse me, Santa Clara County's custody from removal proceedings by federal immigration authorities. Santa Clara County Board Policy 3.4B, well, excuse me, 3.54B, if you're looking it up, requires immigration and customs enforcement agents to obtain a judicial arrest warrant in order for the county to transfer custody of an agency, of an alien. A judicial arrest warrant, that's, that's a made up term. Federal law doesn't require ICE to have a judicial arrest warrant to take into custody a criminal alien. And the local government can't impose that requirement on the federal government, not under the Constitution at least. So in California, taxpayers have the right, it's called taxpayer standing, to challenge illegal government activity by local and state government, basically to stop tax dollars from being spent to promote the illegal government activity. So the lawsuit is designed to uh, enjoin and uh, get an injunction and stop the spending of tax dollars to enforce this illegal sanctuary policy. We're asking, uh, we're saying it's an illegal local regulation of immigration, it's preempted by federal law, and interestingly, it is barred by the doctrine of intergovernmental immunity, which prevents a state from intruding on the federal government's sovereignty. So do you want Santa Clara County lording over the federal government? Uh-uh. Of course you don't. And of course the law doesn't allow it. And why is this an important issue? Because you can have a border, you know, we need a border wall, and I know there's one being built, but it won't be, work as well as it otherwise would as long as every major city and locality in this country is trying to thwart federal immigration law that you, they have a green light to live commit, and commit crimes without fear of being deported. The reason we have an immigration crisis in part, illegal, Ill, an illegal immigration price, crisis in part, is because of these sanctuary policies that are lawless and designed to advance a political agenda over the public safety. February 28th, 2019, and you may know this story, I don't know if how well nationally, how well known nationally this terrible story is, but it should be. Bambi Larson, a Santa Clara County resident, was murdered inside her San Jose home. She suffered extensive and deep wounds consistent with a cutting tool. A few weeks later, Carlos Arvello Carranza was arrested and charged with Larson's murder. He reportedly had multiple prior convictions in California, in Santa Clara, including conviction for burglary in 2015, convictions for, batter, for battery of a police officer resisting arrests, conviction for false imprisonment. He had multiple prior arrests in both Santa Clara and Los Angeles County. Drug paraphernalia, methamphetamine, prowling, and false identification. Oh, another victimless crime, right? That illegal aliens engage in. At the time of this woman's death, this perp was reportedly on probation. ICE officials had sent six separate requests to Santa Clara County. 
when he was about to be released from its custody, asking to be detained long enough for federal immigration officials to take him into custody for removal proceedings. Each request was ignored because of Santa Clara's sanctuary policies. This woman is dead because of these sanctuary policies. They were much broader, evidently, uh, before they tried to change the rule to include, well, maybe if they have a judicial arrest warrant, which is no improvement at all. You know, and Judicial Watch has become the leader and, frankly, sometimes the only legal opponent of these sanctuary policies. We have a case already in San Francisco. We're suing the San Francisco Sheriff's Department over their illegal sanctuary policy. And that case is scheduled to go to trial in, in um, I think, in February of next year, but early, early 2020. And we've been on this case. We had tried to sue L.A. County sanctuary policy. We were unsuccessful in stopping that. But these sanctuary policies make every town a border town because it encourages illegal aliens to reside there, and it especially encourages criminal illegal aliens to reside there. I mean, you may have been following the news here locally in Washington, D.C., Montgomery County, which is a significant county just north of here in Washington, I think has had five rapes, rapes be tied to illegal aliens. And Montgomery County is one of the worst sanctuary jurisdictions in the country. Long-standing sanctuary city, uh, sanctuary policy. Whose side are these politicians are on? I mean, if they want to advocate for amnesty and persuade American citizens to allow these people to remain here, that's their prerogatives as American citizens. But to abuse the powers entrusted to them by their local officials and the law, to aid and abet this criminality, pr protect criminal aliens at the expense of American citizens and other innocents, both legal and otherwise. I mean, because who gets victimized? I mean, you're all sophisticated. Who gets victimized by criminal illegal aliens? Usually people in their own community. There's more news sometimes when the crimes are committed with people outside their community but the day-to-day -day criminality victimizes everyone, especially illegal alien communities. I'm unapologetic about enforcing and trying to enforce the rule of law. We are protecting the innocent in doing so. If you support rights for illegal aliens, then you want borders in, you ought to want borders enforced. You want the rule of law enforced. But until you get the law changed in a way that you like, the idea that you're going to impair its enforcement, it's lawlessness and it's illegal, and that's why we're suing in California.